ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll tell your friends to visit our planetarium. Explain to them that in this place we can show the stars in the daytime or nighttime whenever we want to, making it very easy for all to comprehend the relationships between sun and moon, planets and stars. And now in conclusion, here is the great constellation of Orion. I'm going to show you a lantern slide of Orion as he looked to the ancient Greeks and Romans. To them, Orion was a mighty hunter of great beauty, gigantic strength. And you see the three stars which form his belt, symbolizing courage. There's his sword, the lion's skin, and you see he's holding up his club in the act of fighting Taurus, the bull. <laughs> Well, I hope we see you all here again sometime. Thank you very much. Young lady, the lecture is over. My idea of a regular fellow. I beg your pardon. The kind of a man I'd like to meet. But my dear young lady, I, I... Orion. Gee, look at him stand there fighting Taurus, oh. the bull. <laughs> Don't you shush me, young woman. What are you doing? Looking at Orion? You stop peeping at the neighbors and bring that hot water bottle and step on it. Mr. Orion, indeed. Haven't you any maidenly modesty? Peeking at a man? No. I was looking at my sweetheart in the sky. Look, there's his picture. That's Mr. Orion. See his belt of stars? I met him in the planetarium. Has my little cookie gone for me? Listen, Goldie, here's our horoscope for tomorrow. Now you lay off that astrological nonsense. As your mother, I forbid it. Okay. What's it say? Tomorrow is our day of destiny. <laughs> oh. The stars show a great change is coming into our lives. Love, excitement, danger. Excitement, danger. Better keep an eye on the venerable old room. Oh, you don't believe in stars. Sure I do, and they make money. Oh, don't be so practical, Ma. Those stars that twinkle up in the heavens hold the secret of our happiness. Mm. And those stars that roll around Hollywood in Rolls Royce is no secret of happiness, too. It's in the bank. You're impossible. Step by step, I've tried to teach you beauty. Then we're even, because step by step, I've tried to teach you to do it off to Buffalo. Oh, Ma. Go on, go into your dance. I need to laugh. Okay. How am I doing, Ma? Rotten. That wouldn't get you a split week between Omaha and Utica. Well, that's the last time I'm going off to Buffalo. Well, that'll be great news for Buffalo. Tell me what I do that's wrong. You ain't smiling. If you're going to do an off to Buffalo, you gotta smile. And you gotta keep on smiling. Well, I haven't anything to smile about. I haven't had anything to smile about in 20 years. But I keep on doing it. I fake it like this. Oh, gee, Ma, I must be an awful disappointment to you. I guess I ought to be listening to applause from an audience instead of complaints from customers in Tracy's basement. Anyhow, I know you're great. You're more than that. You're wonderful. Listen, you want to do Minnie the Weeper, you tell it to your guy up there in peanut heaven. I'm no rehearsal hall, and you're no Samson. You get off of those tired little feet while you can. Good night, star baby. Good night, Ma. How's this, Ma? Ah, oh, let's stay friends.
Good night, Mr. Orion. Good morning, Mr. Vincent. You wish to see me? Good morning, Mrs. Gould. Yes, I wish to inspect your section before the doors are open to the public. Very well, sir. Where would you like to begin? I want to see those new dusty ash cans. Even though I'm the general manager of this great store, I make it a rule to inspect one department thoroughly each morning. And I should advise your doing the same if you wish to succeed in this business, Mrs. Gould. Thank you, sir. I shall remember your advice. Here it can. Uh, this is Miss Sarah Jewett, sir. Oh, good morning, Miss Jewett. Good morning, Mr. Vincent. Last week was very good. A fine report. Now, what are you selling best, Miss Jewett? Oh, this new art does this ash can. Gee, it's a honey, Mr. Vincent. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Vincent. Where is your partner? Miss Emily Grant. Oh, she'll be along any minute now, sir. Emmy's never late. You are both interested in your work. You have the Tracy spirit. Yes, sir. <laughs> These results show that you have. Congratulations, Miss Stewart. Today, as you know, is our annual spring sale. And I hope you will be on your toes. We sure will, Mr. Vincent. They call me and Emmy the Pepsi. Um, good morning. Watch your step. Here comes trouble. Here comes trouble. On your toes, Miss Wolf. On your toes. <laughs> <laughs> On your toes. On your toes. <laughs> today's our annual spring sale. On your toes. On your toes. Ah, good morning, Miss Stewart. An excellent report. The Tracy spirit, eh? Be on yours. Be on your tootsies. <laughs> Mrs. Gould, you will bring this young comedian to my office at uh, 17. Yes, sir. And bring that nose with you. Good morning, Jeeves. You can tell Gray he'd better wait with the car. Looks as if I'll be needing him. It looks as if you're fired, my lady. Ah, oh, now don't be vulgar. I gotta think. Gee, Emmy, ain't you ever scared? Sure. I'm scared to death. Uh, Miss Grant. Have you still got that nose? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, put it on. Oh. Oh. Put it on, I say. Now, imitate me to my face. Oh, Mr. Vincent. Go on. Good morning, Mr. Vincent. You know, today is our annual spring sale. <laughs> Remember the Tracy spirit? Be on your toes, my lad. Be on your toes. Thank you. You have done me a great service. I detest pompous mannerisms in executives. And you have shown me that I have acquired some unconsciously. Give me that nose. I will keep it here on my desk as a reminder that we all can learn. Young lady, I think you are wasting your time in our basement. Your vocation is the theater. Oh, no, sir. My mother was a headliner in vaudeville, and she hasn't worked in five years. Who was your mother? Minnie Grant. Oh, dear, I remember her well. I used to be a regular Sunday nighter at the palace. Well, enough of this. What am I going to do with you? I don't know. Shall I fire you? Oh, no, sir. Why not? Well, because whatever you are, you're fair, sir. To make an executive look ridiculous before the other employees. 
That wasn't fair. Well, that was all in fun. Can't you take a joke? <laughs> you young imp. Get out of here. <laughs> yes, sir. On your toes, my lad, on your toes. <laughs> ah, Miss Monster, uh, take a letter. Uh, Mrs. Park and uh, Tryon. Mrs. 1670 Chestnut Street, Philadelphia. Dear sir, uh, it... Uh, Again, we are forced to point out to you that your last delivery... Oh, poor Emmy. What's she gonna do now? What with her sick mother? Good morning, ladies. Emmy! Jeeves, you can tell Gray I won't be needing the car after all. You mean you're not quiet? Don't be vulgar. You want Tracy's to close? <laughs> Come on, get going. Oh, well, you can sure get away with murder. Gee, I wish I'd have been there. Hey, be careful of those cans, useless. You know you beamed me last week. Gosh, ain't you ever serious? <laughs> Not if I can help it. You he ain't human. Don't you ever get sad? Didn't you ever fall for a guy or anything? Oh, sure. Here's my fella. Oh, honest, Emmy, have you got a fella? Mm -hmm. What's his name? Orion. Oh, an Irishman. Where does he live? Up in the sky. Have you gone goofy? No, that's my fella. That's my ideal. See his belt of stars? That means courage. Can you imagine that? And all the time me thinking a belt meant something to hold a guy's pants up. Yeah, but you can't fall for a guy in the sky. Oh, can't I? Well, I have. And his double's walking right here on this earth someplace, coming right in my direction. Hey, do you know who's coming in your direction? All the bargain hunters in New York. On your toes. Has this been a day or has this been a day? Ooh, a pip. Oh, madam, you forgot your change. Madam, you forgot your change. Well, bring it up to me. I can. Employees aren't allowed on the escalator. I'll keep it at the counter for you. But, mister, I've shown you every standard brand. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. None of them the type hatchet I want. Oh, Sarah, that escalator. What's the matter with it? Must be like going to heaven. A closing gong. That's my idea of going to heaven. Someday I'm going to rise, and I'm going to come in here as a customer. And I'm going to be lifted all the way to the top floor on that escalator. And I'm going to buy expensive and useless things. I'm going to buy painted veils and fans and opals and ostrich feathers. Horse feathers. Oh, Emmy. Goldie. I'm so glad I caught you before the store closed. The manager of the Palace Theater has put aside two seats in your name for tonight for the supper show. Oh, swell. Would you want to go, Sarah? Would I? Oh, how's your back, Mrs. Grant? Oh, it's much better. You know, I really got to take in bows in vaudeville. <laughs> Isn't Mama the precious old ham? Pardon me, Miss Grant. Isn't this your mother? Oh, yes. Mother, this is Mr. Vincent. Oh, Mr. Vincent. Mrs. Grant, you have given me many hours of pleasure in the theater. Oh, thank you so much. No, let me thank you. I've admired you for years. I'll make a confession. Several times I sent flowers. Mr. Vincent. Uh, I wonder if... Uh, I think it would be fun to reminisce. Would you honor me by having tea? Mm -hmm. I'd be delighted. Oh. <laughs> I, I hope you girls enjoy your picture. <laughs> to think that I ever should meet you. I'm you know, really... I always very think about Gee, he's taking her to tea. And a very charming daughter you have, Mrs. Grant. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vincent. I think he's a sweet child myself. <laughs>
are we going? You're not hurt, I hope. Have no. you got the tickets for Miss Emily Grant of Tracy's department store? Oh, yes, indeed. Here you are, Miss Grant. I'm not Miss Grant, that is. Oh, excuse me. I hope you enjoy the picture. What's the matter? It's him. Who? Orion. Oh, oh come on, you goober. We'll miss the picture. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Uncle. Oh, my dear, good morning. No, no. Oh, Allow yes. me, Mrs. Gould. Thank you. Allow me, Mrs. Gould. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Dr. John. How does it feel to be an intern? Great. I'll feel much more at home in an ambulance than in front of that theater. But your uncle's been lecturing me. About what? He says I'm not prepared to meet real life. Well, neither is he. I wouldn't, my dear, if I didn't have you to guide me. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> have one, John. Not too much acid. Don't talk sharp. <laughs> John, what about Uncle's dinner party for you Wednesday night? Who would you like me to ask? I don't know. All my classmates are out of town. Well, I'll hold out a place for you. But try and bring someone young for me. You mean for me? <laughs> oh, by the way, would you mind taking this letter to the store with you? One of your sales girls dropped a jewel outside the theater. I was going to register it for safety, but if you'll take it. Right it's for Emily Grant. She's darling. <laughs> what's for Emily? What's for Emily? He didn't see me last night at all, did he? I guess I'm common. So am I, whatever. My dream's too big for me, I guess. What I want's way out of my reach. So different from what I get. Ash cans. Emmy, I was asked to give you this by the doorman at the Palace Theater. Gee, do you know him? Mm -hmm. John's a protege of my uncle. Oh, Mrs. Gould, what's his name? Orion. Orion? John Patrick O'Ryan. O'Ryan. Dr. O'Ryan, if you please. Well, then why is he a doorman if he's a doctor, Mrs. Gould? Well, he won't be a doorman after this week. John worked his way through college. He's going to be a children's doctor. Children? Yes, he's the despair of all the girls because he only looks at babies. Oh, well, thank you for this, Mrs. Gould. You're welcome. Mrs. Gould is real Park Avenue, you know it. Gee, I wish I was a lady. Why do you suppose she works when she doesn't have to? Jeeves, I shall wear this and lay out my sables in my velvet gown. Yeah, what's the big idea? At the noon hour, stupid. I'm going places. Oh. After six months of experimenting, you do? I just wanted to thank you for, for returning this. I beg you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're quite welcome. Theater if I gave you 10 cents? Well, surest thing you know, Duchess. Step right in. Say, what is this, a treasure hunt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, driver, music, please. Sure. You are my lucky I'll too if you had a lip of the sun shining in your eyes. What's the matter with you, Starchies? Won't you ever learn? I'll trouble you to tend to your own business, young man. And I'd advise you to learn yours. That child's too hot under all these covers. Don't you see he's burning up? Well, if I ever. I'm glad you spoke to that hyena. It's a wonder babies grow up at all, isn't it? That baby has a temperature. It's needless suffering that I object to. People don't realize that babies are persons. I'll say. I'd like to have that nurse's name and number. I'd report her.
Excuse me, I have a message from your mistress. You're to take the baby home at once. But I don't understand. Mrs. Gaunt is out of town. Oh, aren't you Miss Dorrance? No. Isn't this Mrs. Cooper's baby? No, this is Mrs. Gaunt's baby. Admiral John Gaunt's baby. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. Dr. Ryan, that's the nurse for Admiral John Gaunt's baby, the commander of the Brooklyn Navy Yard. I don't understand. You remember the baby torturer, Mrs. Simon McGree. You said you wanted a reporter. Oh, yes, I certainly do. Thank you. How did you know my name? Your friend, Mrs. Gould, told me. Besides, you wrote me a letter, didn't you? Oh, yes. You're the young lady from Tracy. That's me. I want to thank you for returning me my diamonds. Oh, you're entirely welcome, I'm sure. I'm afraid this job confuses me, seeing so many people. Well, thank you very much for the information. Young lady, you'll pardon me for talking to employees while on duty is strictly forbidden. All right? Yes, Well, I'm glad this is my last day here. Gosh, did that girl seem a little crazy to you? Five ninety five a dollar, thank you. Emmy, you're late. Where did you go for lunch? I didn't. Oh, that bad, huh? Oh, gee, Sarah. I suppose I'm going to meet him again. I mean, without doing anything about it. That's what gets me. Here. I'll lend you my St. Anthony. He'll fix things for you. But I'm Episcopal. Oh, he's very democratic. Black, white, or yellow, he don't mind. Miss, will you explain this carpet sweeper to me, please? Oh, Emmy, will you wait on the gentleman? Yes. Sarah, I want to see you about an adjustment. Mrs. Gould, you're a lady and you know all about etiquette. Oh, heaven forbid. Well, if you was in love with a guy and he didn't know it, would it be bad etiquette to go after him? Or must you just do nothing and die of maidenly modesty and lonesomeness? Funny you should ask me because we have a bestseller on the subject. All about lonely souls in big cities who have no chance of meeting each other in a natural, normal way. Well, I've fallen for a guy and he don't know it. And I haven't got any chance of meeting him. Now, what would you do? Well, I went shamelessly after my husband. You did? Poor Billy. He hasn't gotten over being astonished yet. Gee, it may be dangerous advice, but in this day and generation, get your man even if you have to shoot him. Thank you. I think I'll be take bold, it back. Be bold, my lads. Be bold. Oh, by the way, how is your friend, Dr. Orion? John's so serious. His sole idea of fun is to trot five miles around the park every morning. Physical exercise and perfect babies, that's all he thinks of. So he runs around the park. Oh, where can I find black enamel? At the end of the aisle, madam. Thank you. Say, Ruby, are these 79 cent field glasses any good? The boss says they're okay. Well, wrap me up a pair. And don't forget the, the usual employee's discount. Sarah, if I can get tomorrow morning off, do you think your sister would let me borrow one of her babies? Sure, you can borrow them all. Take them out and lose them or drown them. My sister wouldn't like. But what do you want with a baby? Bait. Well, decor you turned out to be. As a mother, you should know that those stupid contraptions cause adenoids and protruding teeth. Oh. But you've an unusually healthy baby, madam. 
I wish health like that was contagious instead of sickness. Wouldn't that be fine? I'll say. But I warn you, the greatest menace to babies is you ignorant mothers. Oh, but I'm not his mother, Dr. Ryan. Who are you? Don't you remember me? I'm the girl from Tracy's. Yesterday, you returned me my diamonds. Excuse me for butting in about your baby. Oh, that's all right. I only borrowed him. Did you ever think of anything but babies? No, there's so much a doctor must learn, there isn't time enough. Gosh, I'm ten minutes behind my schedule. Won't you be late for the Palace Theatre? No, I'm at the hospital now. I just got three hours this morning to put in on spinal meningitis. <clears throat> Can't you relax? You could, you know, if you'd forget about babies for a minute and get an eye full of these ducks and flowers and, and me and everything. You know, it's okay with me. Hey, babies. babies. I don't want to seem rude, but I am trying to work. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh! Oh! What in the world is the matter with you? She nearly bit you. Uh, Black Widow, I, I saved your life. Well, thank you very much. Still here? Pieces of me. <laughs> well. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? I was waiting until you got through so you could help me put the baby carriage back on the path. Certainly I will. Where are you going? Your way. You know, spinal meningitis is a real enemy, but we're going to lick it. You bet we are. Yes, sir, we're going to kill this terrible thing. And do you know what my theory is? I. Well, well, what two lovely babies. Doctor, go on with your theory. Oh, yes. Well, I've been working on diet. The whole metabolism can be changed with scientific feeding. Diet will play the most important part. Bone structure can be strengthened, and the entire foundation laid for some of the most... Let's go this way. Well, Dr. Martin's working on it. I'm simply carrying on. Yes, sir, we're going to lick it as we will all the other ailments. One ailment you won't cure. And what's that? Loneliness. I don't understand. Never mind. Thanks, Dr. Ryan, for dropping out of the sky and coming down to Earth. I beg your pardon, Miss... Uh... Grant's the name. Same as General Grant. We've just had the most beautiful morning in my whole life. Together with the ducks and Edward and the flowers and the trees and spinal meningitis. Hey, you don't see me at all, do you? 
Why, of course I do. Well, take a good look, then, because it's for the last time. Tracy's won't let me off for another year. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, it's very refreshing to look at you, Miss Grant. Yes? Yes. You... You must have been a very healthy baby. Oh, yeah, but I'm grown up now. Yes, of course you are. Like one of Dr. Martin's... Guinea pigs? No, no. Like... Like one of his roses. Well, for the love of Pete. They're considered the most beautiful in this state. By that you mean I'm beautiful? I think so. Yes. There's a great deal that contributes to the general effect. I, uh... Yes? You're lovely. You're... Uh-oh. Head out on his cereal and see that he gets a piece of broiled bacon every morning. I will not. I'm going to feed him pickles and ice cream and castor oil. Oh, Emmy, how did it go this morning? Did my sister's baby work all right? Did he? And how? What's that? Roses. Now I know you're crazy. And look at that hat. It's all on cockeyed. <laughs> the whole world's cockeyed. Now what's the matter? Oh, Sarah, I found out how wonderful life can be. Oh, yeah? Look at me, Sarah. Do you think I'm beautiful? No. Well, neither do I. What is it, then? What is what? Well, what is there about me? You mean, what have you got that I haven't got? Nothing. Well, I must have something. You have it. And you better give me back my St. Anthony. There's no use wasting them on a day. Oh, Sarah, let me keep him for a little while longer, won't you, please? You young siren. What have you done to our Dr. Orion? Why? What's the matter? He just telephoned and wants you invited to his party. Oh, you mean he actually remembered me? Well, I should say he did. We're giving a small dinner in honor of Dr. John's becoming an intern, and he insists that you be invited. Oh, but I've never been to a dinner party before. Well, then you're lucky. It's for tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Here's the address. But I wouldn't know how to act at a real party, Mrs. Gould. Oh, nobody does nowadays, so you'll be in the height of fashion. You'll come? <laughs> yes. Good. Now do you think I'm coming? Sure. But they wouldn't ask me if they thought so. Well, if they don't know it, why should you worry? Well, that's the one I really want. Woo, Emmy! Hurry up, your audience is waiting. Just a minute, Ma. Ma, how do I look? Oh, my ducks are swan. 1875, and it looks like $60. <laughs> May I present Miss Emily Grant? Charmed, I'm sure. And of course, you know Dr. O'Reilly. All his life. <laughs> I understand this is your first dinner party. Yes. Sir. How does it feel? Well, I can't imagine anyone feeling embarrassed with you as host. Oh, you've got brains, young lady. Oh, no. If I had brains, I wouldn't still be in the basement. Oh, don't. Dinner is served, sir. Oh, thank you. Come along. There's a strange gleam in John's eye tonight. I, I don't think he likes me. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever thought of marrying Miss Gunn? Oh, morning, noon, and night. You're a rare combination. In a rogue in porcelain. I wish I were a younger man. So do I. Hmm? Oh, I didn't mean to be fresh. <laughs> but you are fresh, my dear. Delightfully fresh and refreshing. Thank you. You know, my niece told me how you borrowed a baby to get acquainted with John. <laughs> Have you designs on him? Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, Dr. Martin, I'm in love with him. Yeah, think of that. But he doesn't know it. Yeah, I know that, too. You know, I think with half a chance, I could make him love me. I'm sure you could. <laughs> uh, Dr. O'Ryan, what effect do you think the speed of modern life plays upon the lives of children? John, Mrs. Field is asking you a question. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'll answer that question for Dr. O'Ryan. It's rearing a nation of nitwits. <gasps> Nonsense. Why, my grandchildren are far more intelligent than I ever was. I entirely agree with you, madam. John. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I beg your pardon. Oh, well, now. I could only make him laugh. He's a solemn youngster, isn't he? You know, if you think it's wrong for him, I won't see him again. I'm tough. 
<laughs> I'm for you, Miss Grant. My, I wish you could take a postgraduate course there. I may be a bit prejudiced about my alma mater, but aren't we all? Yes, how very true, aren't we all? Uh, excuse me, Doctor. Uh, John, you're wanted on the telephone. Arthur, oh, terrorist, you idiot. Doctor Ryan, you don't mind if I leave you two alone together? Not at all. Why, it's been terrible being kept away from you. Wait a minute, what's my name? I know, it's General Grant. Gee, you do remember me. Too much. I keep seeing your face on every page. Among the spinal meningitis? Yes. It was surrounded with... I know, thousands of babies. No. I, I was trying to think when I called your face as I saw it across the table. I had to blink my eyes. It was so alive. I know. It's a star face. A starfish? <laughs> oh, starfish. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's good to laugh. It's like opening windows and letting in the fresh air. You know, Miss Grant, I've been far too serious. You're telling me. <laughs> you are a star face. That's why it shines and twinkles so. Oh, you're so forthright, downright, honest, radiant, and yes, brave. And... You are. Dr. O'Brien, I want you to come and convince my conservative husband of your theories. You know, we can't leave that interesting conversation unfinished. We have him back in a few minutes, Miss. Well, I did my best to stop her. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Gould, I've had such a lovely evening. Do you think it'd be all right if I beat it now? I hate to leave Mother alone too long. Why, of course not. You slip out and I'll explain later. Oh, thanks. Wait, I'll blow you to a taxi. Oh! Oh, Mr. Orion. Is this yours, madame? No, mine's the, uh, the airman. Pardon me, Doctor. What are you looking for? Ash cans. Ash cans. Second counter. Oh, there you are. Hiya, Doc. Who's hurt? You're real. I thought you didn't exist, and that I dreamed you. Did you feel that way, too? All afternoon. I tried to remember your face. I had to come down to find out how your hair grew on the side opposite to me. Oh, it just grows sideways. Uh, how much is this, miss? Let's get out of here. I can't. All right, then listen. I love you. But I'm common. So am I. But I'm not educated. Thank heaven. But your career. It's yours. But, but... Stop the butts. No objections. Don't you understand I love you? What's your first name? Emmy. I don't like it. I'll call you Mary. That's the only name for a woman. Come here to me. Please, not here. What better place? I love you. I shall always love you. Right straight through death, not on the other side. Through all eternity. This is the real thing, Mary. It's forever. Forever. We're engaged. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye. Now that's what I call first day. Hey, give me back my St. Anthony. I'll see if he'll work for me now. Oh, Emmy, there's going to be the swellest lot of carnival shows this year we ever had. Say, don't take your hat off. I want you to go to the delicatessen and get some butter. I forgot to get it. But as I say, the... A gift from heaven? Oh, Mom, it fell out of a clear sky. Those Irish are that spontaneous. But you better tell Mr. Orion to be careful so that no one notices he's lost a star off of that belt. He's liable to get fired. Gee, Mom, ain't it grand? Hmm, there must be a depression in heaven. They're making the stars much smaller. <laughs> oh, darling, it's grand. It's the biggest diamond in the world and the brightest star. If it makes you happy. Oh, happy I'm in heaven. Why shouldn't you be? Your boyfriend's the head man there, isn't he? I'll say. And when, when he's not with me, well, I can just look up and watch him. Mm, you're starting wrong. A man doesn't like to be watched, even if he's in heaven. Oh, he's different. He'd have to be, staying up there in the sky all night and looking after babies all day. And I'm going to help him. Now, staying out all night or looking after babies? Oh, Mom. I mean, after we're married. Married? And 
when'll that be? Well, right now, he can't give me anything but love. Okay. Most husbands can't give you even that, only in a pinch. Well, he wants to give me everything. Don't be a sucker. Settle for love. Oh, gee, Mom, isn't it tough when two people who love each other like we do have to let money interfere with their happiness? Oh, yes, it's a shame. Come to think of it, your father never let anything like that interfere with our happiness. And he wasn't a star. He was just a hoofer and always laying off. I'm sure old Ryan has courage enough for that. Oh, we figured it out, and he can make $30 a week, and I make 15 Well, that's a lot of money these days, when he's got a diploma and everything. Well, it makes $45, but we can't live on that. Oh, sure you can. Of course, you can't be up in the stars and live in a penthouse. <laughs> $45 isn't very much for all of us. Oh, I'm so busy with your good luck that I forgot to tell you about mine. Your good luck? Uh-huh. I may not be young enough to have a guy fall out of heaven for me, but I'm young enough to have Joe Jacobs fall for me. He's starting a new burlesque house in Dallas, and he wants me to go down there and open it up for him. Burlesque? Sure. Only three shows a day, 60 bucks a week. And the same billing I had 20 years ago, only this time it'll be queen of burlesque. In tights? What's the matter with me in tights? Oh, Mother dear, it's disgraceful. I won't be able to look anybody in the face again. Well, I will. They won't remember my face. Oh, don't be vulgar. You can't do it. I won't let you. Will you go and get that butter for me? Here's my good lamb stew burning up while you're talking. Tell me that a woman of my age has nothing to offer in show business today. Well, many 40 years, it's no age for burlesque. But look at me, I'm an actress. That's it, we don't use actresses anymore. There's no acting? Of course not. All we have is sailors and young fellas with no brains. They whistle and they, they scream at the actresses. Actresses, you said there was no acting. Well, we call them actresses because we can't find a new name for what they do. All right, I'll be up to date. I'll do what they do. What? You mean you would do a hot dance? Not as long as I live. Why not? My figure's as good as it ever was. Oh, Minnie, Minnie, Minnie. You want that all the old-timers should point their finger at Joe Jacobs and say that he, for a few dollars, allowed the great Minnie Grant to go into burlesque and make a fool of herself? A good actress can't make a fool of herself. But I tell you, they don't act anymore. All right, I'll dance. But they don't dance anymore. Then I'll sing. But they don't sing anymore. Well, what do they do? They coon. Well, maybe they would go for a good song. Oh, come on, Joe. Let me sing one of my own numbers in my own way. Minnie, darling, they would laugh at you. Well, they never have laughed at me. Come on, sit down, Joe. You know, I used to be good. Maybe I still am. All right, Minnie, but you embarrass me terribly. <laughs> you remember this one? 
They call me redhead, redhead, gingerbread head, carrots, bricked up, golden rust head, rody cup and sorrel top. Gee, I'd like to throw them in the pond. Redhead, redhead, gingerbread head, freckle face. Strawberry blonde head, here's a white horse, hide your head. Oh, why wasn't I born to blonde? How's it? Well, it's all right, but the sailors won't like it. How do you know you liked it? Well, I like it, but I'm not the sailor. Redhead, redhead, gingerbread head. How much will you take for this redheaded business that nobody wants? Fifty a week. Fifty a week? Are you crazy? Why, I used to get... I know what you used to get, but I'll give you 40. Make it 45. For 45, I can get two blondes. I'm a blonde. <laughs> That's right, you know. It's funny. All the time you were singing that song, I could see your wonderful red hair. Then I get the 60? Who said 60? 40, 45, 50. Make up your mind. I give you 50 dollars. Well, tell me, Millie, do you really need 60? Oh, Jerry, you was sweet. Where do you live, Mr. Orion? Right up there, next to Mr. Mars, lady. Look at the city, John. And here you and me sitting watching the stars. Hitching our wagon to the stars, and much happier than all the stuffed shirts up there in penthouses. Are you happy, darling? Does a fellow sit in a dark corner of a park with a girl lisping loony talk because he's sad? a brand new one. It's called I'm the Gal the Lonesome Cowboy Left Behind. She sat aboard a busted board. Oh, Sheriff, sir, said she, please find my man, my pony dad. He's lost himself from me. I'm the Gal the Lonesome Cowboy Left Behind. And to him I sure was awful good and kind. His chest was tough and hairy. And he left me for a prairie. I'm the gal, a lonesome cowboy left behind. Oh, his eye took on that wrong and look, and I know he got the itching foot. When he splurred my possum pie, I didn't mind. If he fell for wild horse Mary, but he shook me for a prairie. I'm the gal, a lonesome cowboy left behind. He grabbed a quirt and a satin shirt, and he yipped a loud whoopee, and then he walked. Away from me. And he last was saw with a cyborg swan and a half was on each knee. And that don't sound lonesome to me. I'm the gal, the cowboy left me And with a little rifle strapped on a year behind. We may not have been mated, but he'll show me ventilated. I hope you've enjoyed the performance. If you'll pass out quietly, this lady will send you a picture of herself autographed by the jail matron. If you haven't had your money's worth, sue the management. Well, what's the matter with my song? The sailors liked it. Well, now you can sing it to the Marine. Sergeant, take it away. Sergeant, I never surrender to anything less than a captain. How many more out there? Don't rush me, Sergeant. I can't take longer steps. Uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. A woman old enough to have children. Hmm, you're no spring chicken yourself. Listen, Sergeant. It's not her fault. She was just helping me out. She don't belong in tights. Mm, that's what you say. Oh, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> My heart is bleeding, and you're making jokes. Come on, get going. You cannot pinch a lady for singing a ballad. I 
imagine by now, Miss Grant, you've found I'm a very poor lecturer. It takes courage to hurt people, doesn't it, Doctor? I suppose it's the confidence one has in believing one is right. Right? Who has the right to break another person's heart? Nobody, dear child, nobody. And yet you come here and ask me to give up the one thing in my whole life. I came here to try to make you realize that a doctor, a, a successful doctor, must be beyond reproach. But he is. He's the most decent person in the whole world. I know that, dear girl. You see, I... I love him, too. And I know he loves you. Then... Then why? Is it... Is it... Because of Mother? I'm sure she is. But with this newspaper notoriety, John's patients might not think so. All right, then I'll tell you when you tell John and the hospital authorities. My mother went into burlesque because she wanted to make it easier for John and me to marry. She was mistaken. No, oh, no, she wasn't. She was arrested because she loved me and she wanted to see me happy. There's no disgrace in self-sacrifice. All of us make sacrifices at some time or other. For those we love? Tell me, Doctor. Would it re really be so hard for John? It would indeed. You say we all make sacrifices for those we love. Have you ever made a sacrifice? I'm making one now. All right, Doctor. I promise you, I'll never see John again. Oh, you poor child. No, don't feel sorry for me, please. I told you that night in your house. That I'm tough. That I will be. You'll see. I will be. Sarah. Mr. Vincent tells me that your sales have fallen off very badly in the last three months. Oh, gee, Mrs. Gould, I can't work with this sour puss. I miss Emmy so much. Where in the world do you suppose she could have disappeared to? I wish I knew. She moved without leaving any forwarding address. Isn't it terrible to think that publicity can ruin a perfectly innocent person? Poor John. He's all broken up. Now, I'm your toe, Sarah. You make me lose all my respect for you. I'm sorry, Doctor. You should be. But that isn't going to prevent me from telling you the truth. I know the truth. No, my boy, you don't. You don't know that Emily decided to give you up because she wanted you to be a physician. A big man in your profession. And she was afraid she was standing in your way. But she wasn't. John, three people have made very definite sacrifices for you and you've turned them down. Doctor, that girl means more to me than... Frankly, I can't do anything without Emmy. Ah, that's the way you feel about it. Go out and find her. And when you do, tell her that you hadn't got the courage to carry on like she had. Tell her the man for whom she made the greatest sacrifice in her life, hoping he would understand and win, is a washout. Now, for heaven's sake, get up on your hind legs and fight. Indeed, please. Hello, Miss Grant. Sorry, we're not allowed to talk to the customers, sir. It did the trick, Miss Grant. I haven't a mannerism left, thanks to you. It took me three months to find you. So now, get out of this wretched place. Get your hat. Are you sure it's all right, Mr. Vincent? After all that newspaper talk? Newspaper nonsense. It's your unbeaten record we want. 
Mr. Vincent. Orange aid, miss. As proof to your fellow workers of my faith in you, I shall escort you to your counter tomorrow morning myself. Oh, Mr. Vincent. I don't know what to say. Look! What's the matter with you? You are fired. Oh, thank you. Sarah? Oh, yes, Mrs. Gould. What have you done? You're to report to Mr. Vincent's office at once. Oh, I haven't done anything. My records are okay. Well, I don't know about that, but you're to go there immediately. It's serious. What do you know about that? Do you suppose I'm fired? Yes, ma'am. You may kiss me, Poison Ivy. Emmy! Sarah! Oh, Emmy, why didn't you tell me where you'd been? Gee, I've been so long. Oh, dry up, Niagara Falls. Listen, that Mr. Vincent's the swellest guy. You know, it makes me ashamed what I think how I used to make fun of him. He's going to escort me down to our counter and show those clucks that he personally re-engaged me. No! Yeah! Oh, and Sarah, listen, wait till you see the surprise I've got for you in the basement. Listen, I've been in that basement for four years and I ain't been surprised <laughs> yet. Young ladies, follow me. Oh, Emmy. Ever knew wished on for more than I ever knew. A sweeter rose, a softer sky, and a brown day that would not dance away. We have the pleasure of having Miss Amy Grant back again with us. Will you kindly escort her to her counter? Oh, excuse me. Emmy, I'm so happy. Thank you. Oh, Sarah, who do you suppose is singing? I don't know. Who? That's a surprise. It's Mom. Well, can you imagine that? Yeah, Mom's in the basement, too. I wish to Miss Smith, I'm going to send you to another department. Jimmy, it's swell to have you back again. I've missed you, Jeeves. Oh, Mr. Vincent, I can't tell you how grateful I am. My dear Mrs. Grant, it was not sentiment that prompted me to do this. You're bound to be a great business asset to us. <laughs> well, at least I'm doing two shows a day again. How about Dr. O'Reilly? Oh, Sarah. Please don't talk about Dr. Orion. Oh. oh, why does Mother have to sing that song? Of all songs. You sent for me? Yes, Mrs. Gould. I hope our house beautiful display is a success. It's all you hope for, Mr. Vincent. I'm going on a vacation. Yes? I know, I know. I haven't been on a vacation for many years, but this is different. Different? Yes. I'm to be married tomorrow morning at Grace Church. And the destiny of Tracy's Incorporated for the next two weeks is your responsibility. Thank you and congratulations. Please send Emmy to me at once. Thank you. Emmy, Mr. Vincent wants you. Oh, yes, Mrs. Gould. Oh, Mrs. Gould, what goes on here? Oh, it's awful. He's old enough to be her grandfather. Well, for a grandfather, he must have a pretty good line. Besides, Emmy and her ma likes him. He's had them to theaters, cocktail parties, everywhere for weeks. Such a marriage spells ruin. Marriage? She didn't say anything about marriage. Oh, Sarah, it's been on my conscience for weeks. I foolishly promised my uncle not to tell Dr. Orion that Emmy'd returned to the store. And now I feel I'm to blame for this, poor child. Listen, Mrs. Gould. If I could find some guy with high blood pressure and no sales resistance who could take me out of this basement and give me a chance to look at the sun, I'd marry him if I had to wheel him to church. Emmy's marrying the ball. Emmy's marrying the ball. 
I really wasted the best years of my life. You agree that marriage is the only protection for a woman? Yes. I want our marriage to take place tomorrow morning at Grace Church, with your consent. Of course. Then, a two weeks honeymoon in Bermuda. <laughs> After all, what has Doreen got to do with marriage? People are sentimental about it. It binds the couple together. Well, he had one, ain't that enough? Oh, but it's bad luck to lose a wedding ring. Oh, don't talk silly, Sarah. <laughs> Eureka! I found it. <laughs> now we can be married. No, you can't. Oh, no, you can't. John! What do you mean, young man, by interrupting my marriage? I'm not interrupting it. I'm preventing it. I let her slip through my fingers once before, but never again. You can't have her. But, my dear sir, you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Why, when Mrs. Gould telephoned me, I couldn't believe it. This whole thing's a disgrace, sir. You should be ashamed. But will you permit me to... No, I won't. But, but, but... Don't talk like a putt-putt. Will you just let me tell you? No, I'm telling you. This is the lady I'm marrying. <laughs> What? Oh, Ryan. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, just the same, you're going to lose her. She'll never go in your store again except <laughs> as a customer. Oh, at last I get to ride on the escalator. <laughs> 